Hello and good morning everyone. So now today we we'll, we are on page 142 USMLE step 1 2021. I am Dr. Ranjit Sa. We are uh, revising our USMLE section of microbiology and on that we have let, we have initially talked about this hemophilus influenzae in the previous lecture where we have talked about this uh, thumb sign and this uh, endoscopic picture where you have seen there is a cherry red appearance and in a lateral neck x-ray you can find thumb sign. This is responsible for the many type of diseases. There are two that is capsulated and non-capsulated. Capsulated was causing epi, epi, acute epiglottitis, meningitis and bacteremia. Now coming to the Burkholderia cipacea complex. Actually Burkholderia is a gram negative bacteria that causes pneumonia in and can transmit it between the cystic fibrosis pressure. So this is the bug that is responsible for pneumonia. They are is usually infecting the cystic fibrosis patient and often they are multi-drug resistant. The, these bugs become important because they have the capacity to, to make the drug resistant. So they are, they are not able to get killed by normal drugs because of that it is very difficult to treat this bacteria. The infection is relatively contraindicated actually to undergoing lung transplant due to its association with the poor outcomes. So if there is any patient who, who has the, uh, who has are going for a lung transplant and if he or she is getting infected with the Burkholderia cipacea complex, then in that patient we cannot do the lung transplant or we cannot donate the lungs because this Burkholderia cipacea complex infection in a lung transplant patient will lead to the poor outcome. Moving forward, and we are going to page 143 where we'll talk about the Bordella, Bordetella pertussis. Bordetella pertussis is actually a gram negative aerobic cocobacilli that has the virulence factor including pertussis toxin, adenyl cyclase toxin, and tracheal toxin. This, so, there are the three toxins that is very important that is, pertussis toxin, adenyl cyclase toxin, and tracheal toxin. They also have the three clinical stages that is the cateral, paroxysmal, and convalescent. In cateral stage, they have the low grade fever and chorizia. In the per paroxysmal stage, there is a proxim of intense cough followed by the inspiratory whoop known as the whooping cough followed by the post tussum vomiting. So, this is a classical bacteria that was responsible for the whooping cough and that was a very common in the early days before vaccination. So, after vaccination, this, this disease has been reduced to a very high level. So, there is very few cases you can see. But since those baby or those people who are not vaccinated, they will develop this infection with the Bordetella pertussis. The disease is called the pertussis, which is commonly caused of the whipping cough. Why it is called whipping cough? Because the patient will develop long, um, continuous cough, like a machine gum cough. You can, you can see that. <coughs> so it will be like a peop people is coughing continuously due to the irritation in the throat, and there will be the inspiratory, inspiratory whoop like <coughs> this is the inspiratory sound inspiratory whoop that leads to a call that's why they are called the whooping cough that leads to a, actually after inspiratory whoop the baby get in sinus they, they will develop vomiting post vomiting is very common so this is the Bordella pertussis is actually a disease that leads to there will be a continuous cough and because of that there will be the pressure effect. There will be the uh, conjunctival hemorrhage, they can be affect the brain, they can cause your herniation, there will be the other pressure effect since there is a continuous cough, there will be increase, in, increase abdominal and thoracic pressure. So this will lead to a long term complication and the cough is due to there is that severe irritation in the throat. Why there is irritation? Let me like talk explain you so you can see over here this is the uh, so we are talking about let's begin from here so talking about this pertussis pertussis is the fastidious aerobic gram negative rods they are only human are only uh, host for the body type pertussis their transmission is by the close contact I mean, and with the aerosol droplet close contact means contact uh, with anything like it. they can be by the sharing towel they are when we are in a close contact droplet infection in one or two meter of distance then this will easily get transmitted to us there is the cateral there are the three states cateral states proximal states and convalescent states their severe disease occur in infant they have the article presentation there will be gagging gasping apnea and bradycardia no lifelong immunity from infection or immunization vaccine was introduced and which has reduced the case actually okay now talking about this symptoms of the whooping cough there will be the low grade fever exhalation after coughing running nose vomiting during or after coughing fits apnea baby may have a pause 
in breathing and that leads to uh, their weeping cough and plus apnea. There will be pro proximal cough fits followed by a high pitch whoop. That is important Why the, because of that they are called the, this disease is called whooping cough. Babies may have a little or no cough at all. So normally this will be only in baby but uh, if you are talking about the infection people will have a long 100 days cough actually. Pertussis is known as the whooping cough, highly contagious respiratory disease. It is caused by the bacteria Bordella pertussis. Pertussis is known as uncontrollable violent coughing which make often hard to breathe after cough fit sometime with the pertussis often needs to take a deep breath which result in the whooping sound and because of this they are called this disease called whooping cough pertussis can affect people of all ages but can be very serious evenly deadly for babies less than one year old the best way to protect against this disease is vaccination so the, it has three stages. We have talked about this cateral stage. Then there will be the proximal stage and convalescent stage. In the cateral stage, uh, this is uh, everything we have to remember. Remember, this is a two weeks, two weeks, and two weeks. That will be better. This is the initial stage, then proximal stage, and convalescent stage is the gradual recovery stage. Initial stage. In the proximal stage, we'll have to hear this whoop sound. Why these people will develop this continuous cough? Because you can see here the inhalation of the aerosol droplet containing Bordella pertussis. So bacteria get inhaled. This is due to a droplet infection, not airborne. The bacteria attached to the ciliated air, airway epithelium and produce the toxin. So they will go to your respiratory epithelium cell and then there they attach and produce the toxin. There have the three toxin I have talked about you. It pertussis toxin, then anal toxin toxin and, and tracheal toxin. After the, this toxin, what happened? Bacteria multiply, influx, influx of the neutrophil, damage to the ciliary epithelium by tracheal toxin. Okay, and then there will be the mucus hypersecretion. So there is a continuous secretion in the throat. You can see there is a continuous secretion in the throat, and because of that, you reflex there you are producing continuous cough. Because, because of their toxin, they are continuously secreting in our trachea and they are producing continuous irritation and because that there is a continuous cough in the paroxysmal step after a bouts of this cough there will be a episode where there will be inspiratory whoop in this cause of that they are known as the whooping cough let's back go back to it so we are talking about gram negative aerobic cocoa bacilli virulent factor include include this toxin that is a bortitious toxin adenyl cyclase toxin and tracheal toxin they has the three stages cateral paroxysmal and convalescent they are usually prevented by the vaccine the vaccine are two type tdap or diphtheria tetanus or bortitious so this they were the initially giving in the uh, when we are in the infancy period in the epi schedule and we usually get this dtap later on we can give this tdap only so it depends where we where in which part of the world you are in, in southern asia mainly in the uh, national immunization program they usually give this as a three dose vaccine where we get prevented they can also be given tdap normally we give diphtheria uh, tetanus and acellular pertussis vaccine treatment include if anybody get infected with this pertussis infection they need to be treated and they are they are actually given microlytes that is the erythromycin if allergic then you can use the cotrimoxazole that is tmp smx any person who get contact with the body pertussis patient everybody close contact needs to be treated for with erythromycin for at least 14 days this is the treatment it it is not only for the patient but all those people who get come contact with the person or the patient let me <clears throat> let me re revise you let me revise you the kaplan book as well where you will have a complete picture actually so talking about this uh, bordetella bordetella has a gram negative small group they are strict aerobes they are especially medical importance because it causes the the main species is bordetella pertussis that is um, that is medically important the bordetella pertussis has a distinguished feature that is the gram negative aerobic rod encapsulated organism their resorber is the human is only the resorber transmission we have the respiratory droplets pathogenesis they contain the bordella pertussis mucosal surface pathogen they have the attachment protein that adds attached in our respiratory epithelium nasopharyngeal epithelium they secrete the toxin that is the adenyl cyclic toxin tracheal toxin pertussis toxin and this all toxin helps in a different way like 
Renal cyclase impairs the leukocyte chemotaxis, even in wheat phagocytosis and causes local edema. Tracheal to toxin interferes with the ciliary action, kills the ciliated cell. There is the endotoxin. Potassium toxin has the A and B component, OM protein toxin, that help in the ADP ribosylation of GI. In wheat, negative regulatory of the renal cyclase interferes with the transfer signal from the cell to intercellular mediator system, lymphocytosis, isolate cell. Uh, activation leading to hypoglycemia and blocking of the immune cell effector cell, decrease chemostasis, increase the histamine sensi sensitivity. So there is the lot of toxin like adenyl cyclase, adenyl cyclase toxin, tracheal toxin, and potassium toxin. They have a different mechanism, but as a whole, they will in they they will block your cilia the cilia get damaged and there will be a, a lot of secretion collected in the throat then what happened the irritation is continuous and that is not clear out the uh, secretion so you will have a continuous cough that you have to understand uh, talking about the bottle of potassium, the vaccine lasts for 5 to 10 years. Baby is born with a little immunity. Vaccinated humans greater than 10 years serves as a reservoir. 12 to 20 percent of febrile adults with cough greater than two, week, two weeks. We should think of partitious. The vaccine is DTAP. This is the acellular partitious vaccine. Component includes immunogens, vary by the manufacturer. Some have partitious toxin, filamentous hemagglutin, protectin, and other. So it depends upon the which uh, company vaccine you are taking, and they will put one or another toxin in it. About their, about their in, um, disease life cycle, you can see. There is an incubation period of 7 to 10 days. So if baby get in or baby get infected, the bacteria is in health. After 7 to 10 days, they will develop the symptoms. Initial symptoms will last uh, for one and two weeks. That is rhinorrhea, malaise, sneezing and anorexia. Then they will reach to the paroxysmal stage where there will be the repetitive cough with oops, vom uh, oping cough, that's oops and vomiting, leukocytosis. And in the late stage, there will be the Diminished paroxysmal cough, development of secondary complications like pneumonia, seizure, and encephalopathy. In initial stage, the organism is easy to grow, but in the later stage, organism become difficult to grow. So, initially, people baby come with the like uh, common cold symptom, and you will think, oh no, this is nothing. It is a common cold. And if you do not suspect for open cord, then the later they will develop the serious complication because in initial stage is only the period where we can establish the diagnosis later we will not able to prove the diagnosis and that becomes a challenging part now diagnosis we have to understand that this is the fastidious delicate they can grow on the regain loyal media or bordered gangue media so if you, they ask you where we can grow this bordered lapotitious organism then they have to tell, think of this bordered so bordered lapotitious bordered gangue this is the bordered lapotitious name from this scientist so bordered gangue media or regain loyal media either direct cough flats or nasopharyngeal culture difficult to culture from the middle of the paroxysmal stage so after paroxysmal middle of the paroxysmal stage the organism cannot be cultured direct immunofluorescence or nasopharyngeal smear can be done pcr and serological tests are available treatment is supportive care that is hospitalization if age less than seven, six months erythromycin for 14 days including all household contact that is very important so we need to treat with the erythromycin not only to the patient but to the all the close contact because they all get infected and it is very transmissible disease it is easily get transmitted if adult will not develop disease then they will be the colonizer and they can spread in the community so everybody needs to be get treated for 14 days with the erythromycin Vax prevention can be done with the vaccination that is DTAP a solar partitious filamentous hemagglutin plus partitious toxoid immunity wins after five to seven years babies are born with little or no little, little or no immunity from the mother so the baby which are just born and they have no immunity actual actually and since the vaccination this period actually in nepal or say in asia we all over the world we vaccinate at one and a half month so it is about six weeks of the baby then we give vaccination so between the born and six weeks they are very prone to get infected so baby need to be get protected from this bacteria because at that time they have no immunity they have no immunization even later also the immunity of uh, after vaccination get wins and that period also becomes vulnerable time this is really a very infectious disease they can be transmitted easily this leads to a whooping cough and that whooping cough make it's a characteristic since there is a vaccine this disease has become less prevalent in the community, but it can be asked in the USMLE because these have 
like they can be acts you as a toxin they can be uh, leads uh, they can be correlate with the 